What's going on, all gamers? Today we're back with some more Cyberpunk 2077. I have no idea what he's doing. He's going to get run over in a second. Yeah, but today what I'm going to bring you is a build, an ultimate slow motion build. The Sandaviston and everything that's in it is really going to help you out to take on the hardest difficulties in the game, and it's got almost constant uptime. So if that interests you, then stay tuned. That's coming up next. Welcome back everybody, today we're going to be going over a build for Cyberpunk. I really enjoy this build, it can take on the very hard difficulty, you don't tend to worry too much about stuff and it's a lot of fun to play. If you've seen Netflix Edge Runners, you'll know that Sandaviston is all the rage at the moment, so I've tried to build something that will allow as much uptime of that as possible. Right, so what I'm going to do, I'm going to just chuck on a little bit of footage, show you what this build's about, and from there you can decide whether it's the one for you, and then I'll go over everything that's involved in it. So jumping over to the weapons and one that I really enjoy using is the Comrade's Hammer. This is an absolute beast. It's a tech weapon but one that doesn't really charge. So you can kind of pick and choose which perks to upgrade in order to get the best from this. The main reason I enjoy this, it does a lot of single target damage. It's very fun to use, especially in slow-mo. It's very slow reloading, so it won't be for everyone, but I really enjoy it. Also, it says at the bottom here, modified clip contains a single bullet laden with explosive materials that wreaks havoc at the point of impact. What it means is that basically when you take a shot, there's like a little error effect and it can decimate your enemies, taking lots of them out at once. Very fun, especially if you enjoy taking those headshots in crowds of enemies. Just underneath here and what I've tried to give you is a little bit of a stealthier option because we're going to go that route as well in case you want to get past people. So we're going to have the Dying Knight. This is far from the hardest hitting gun, but I do really enjoy using it. It's got a nice little feature about it, increased headshot damage by 50% and significantly reduces the reload time. If you're after a kind of easy to use weapon, this one's definitely a nice one to do, especially for stealth because we're able to put a little silence on it. And for the mods, we've put a damage multiplier when attacking from stealth and the rest of them's just increased damage. This one you will not be using too often, but if you do want to go into a little bit of stealth, it's perfect for that use. And just one of my favourites in the entire game is the Katana. This right here does some ridiculous damage, it really does. It's a lot of fun to see in action and it's going to, because of the skill tree we're using as well, it's really going to help us out because it means we're able to get our kind of bleed effect going off and we're able to revitalise ourselves, get a lot of health back whenever we're in trouble. Nice bit of physical damage, doesn't cost much when you're actually attacking because of the stamina reduction. Crit chance is good, crit damage is good, and the bleed chance is good as well. The Katana is one of my favourite weapons in the game, especially for your close combat melee builds. Now over on the right here, you can get a lot better than myself, definitely. I haven't even got four slotters over here. If I remember correctly, it's these two that can get the four slots. Just down here you can get three slots on the actual uh, legs. 
just find the best gear for yourself. If you can get legendary that will work best because then you can slot in the legendary armadillo mods which will give you the most bang for your buck in order to get a nice chunky bit of armor. But even with this, far from the best setup, I'm able to get a nice bit of armor and I'm not really having any difficulties in any stages of the game. The only people that give me a little bit of trouble is if I'm just randomly doing footage and I'm trying to fight off hundreds of hundreds of police. I may get caught out every once in a while. But even in that, a lot of the times you can take them out and not have too much worry because you can get your health back. So yeah, just put on the best clothes that you can with the highest armor, highest mod slots and you'll be golden with that aspect. Lastly, just down here, like I said, if you did want a bit of stealth going on, we've got an optical camo. This is a cool thing to use. I don't like the fact that it's got a 45 second cooldown, but I can definitely understand why, because if it didn't, you would use it every second of the game and just walk past everyone. But if you do want to play a little bit stealthy, say for example, you're going to be using your pistol, then you're going to activate this. You could walk past people, you can assassinate people, you can do whatever you want, and you're in a nice little bit of optical camo, which is pretty much invisible, and then you can go about your business. Now the cyberware is going to be the main aspect of this. You're going to want to pick up heal on kill for your frontal cortex. This is essential and just an absolute beast and a lot of fun to use. Instantly restores 10% health after defeating any enemy. Just over here and we've got mechatronic core. Increases the damage to drones, mechs and robots by 50%. That's going to help you with any of the tough mechs that's going on. It's really going to take them out easy and you don't have too much worries with your build with any kind of encounter. Just down from here and we've got the Kiroshi Optics Mark III. Chuck in whatever you want in here. Honestly, it's completely up to you, but I would say make sure you've got an increased headshot bonus damage by 25% because that's really going to help you out with those nice tasty crit shots. Jumping down to our circulatory system and this one is down to your preference. I found this one's a little bit of fun at the moment and I don't need to worry too much about health most times, but you'll either pick this micro generator or pick biomonitor. If you're worried about survivability, pick that one instead of this. This one, when your health drops to 15%, release an electroshock that deals damage equal to 50% of the target enemy's max health and applies shock to the enemies. Just means usually if you're being bundled, you do a little area effect, you're then able to go into slow-mo, get around everyone and have a fun time taking them out with headshots. Just over from there, again, a little bit of survivability, second heart. Instantly restores 100% of your max health when your health falls to zero, cooldown of two minutes does have a two minute cooldown but it's like a second life of sorts so if you are caught at it does mean that you're able to get back up and live to fight another day. Just over from here and Bioconductor, this cyberware reduces all cooldowns of cyberware by 30%. Absolutely amazing for anyone who wants the best for their cooldowns. Immune system, we haven't really got too much going into this, we can't put the best in but we have got cata resist, increase all resistances by 8% and over from there, shotgun ore. After taking damage, there is a 2% chance of releasing a large electroshock. Honestly, if you don't even want to put these in, you don't have to. I've just chucked them in because we wanted to be as scared as possible. Nervous system, 100% essential is Karenzikov. Allows you to aim and shoot while sliding or dodging and slows time by 90% for 3.5 seconds when blocking, aiming or attacking. Basically, you're going to go into your slow-mo for three and a half seconds whenever you're aiming your gun most times and then doing a dodge and then you've got a five second cooldown. Between this and everything we've got going on, you don't have to worry, you're in slow-mo pretty much whenever you want. And of course, hand in hand with that, we've got nano relays. Increases Sandavistan and Karenzikov duration by two seconds. Perfect for any slow-mo build, chuck this on when possible. Then from there, we've got Optical Camo. Like I said earlier, this one's going to be our invis if we want a bit of fun and play a little bit stealthily. Other than that, we've got the Subdermal Armor, increasing our armor by 300, making us very, very tanky and survivable. Now the operating system, still my favorite one in the game, is the Quiant Sandavistan Mark IV. This one allows slow time to 25%. I really like that. Where it doesn't slow time quite as much, you're able to get about a bit, you can take a lot of enemies out in that slow mode, or you can even make a quick exit if you really need it. 12 seconds uptime, cooldown of 3 seconds, which is ridiculous to say the least. It increases any damage dealt by 15% when the Sandavistan is active, increases crit chance by 15% when Sandavistan is active as well, and you're going to want 3 of those legendary heat sinks, giving you the 4 second cooldown on each, 4, 8 and 12 second cooldown. 
hand in hand with the Korenzikov just over here is how you saw the footage earlier where we are pretty much in constant uptime of slow-mo having a lot of fun taking enemies out without them even being able to move much just down from here we've got titanium bones increases carrying capacity by 60 percent i will always have this on you craft a lot you carry a lot you find a lot make sure you put this on you don't want to be over encumbered and walking around at a snail's pace your legendary synaptic signal optimizer which is a bit of a mouthful to say this is going to give you a nice chunky bit of health really help you out because we're quite close range sometimes getting our health back having a large health pool works out best just down from here it is completely up to you i've put in smart link just because every once in a while i like to chuck on a smart weapon we haven't got it going on our build so if you want to put something else in here you very well can do smart link i like having on just in case i like a bit of a change up for the arms i've put on gorilla arms it is totally your choice put whatever you want in here i would not be using these much anyway i don't know if you will but if you do you're going to want to boost their damage a little bit but most times you're probably going to be using that katana anything works in this slot except for the mantis blades because if i remember correctly they take you out of slow-mo when they're doing their finishing effect so probably don't have those on and my favorite legs in the game reinforced tendons press a while in midair allowing you to do a double jump i've got so used to having these on that i probably could never take them off allows you to get to places get up higher jump over cars when they're going to hit you just just so useful all the way around now i've got quite a few points and perks i would say chuck in 20 for your body chuck in 20 for your reflexes 20 for your technical ability and then i have made an epic epic boo-boo because i was going to go a completely different place at the start don't have any intelligence you don't need it chuck it all into your call but seven is still pretty good these are to work towards obviously if you're early game just try and get as much as you can in order to get your damage up and have a nice little and have a nice little fun build going on until you can make your way towards this now lastly we'll be going over the perks and how you should allocate them remember the more you play the more you're going to obtain i've just come back so a lot of you will have much more than myself but you can always reset these at any point by just spending credits so now there's no real wrong way just make sure like i said you don't do what i did and put your attributes in the wrong place otherwise you're in trouble so stick with 20 20 20 and all of the rest i believe you'll be able to get 11 into your call what i'll do is i'll go over each one but ultimately if you just want to grab a screenshot of this or just pause it here you can chuck them in and allocate them this way so you're going to want one in pack mule to give yourself a nice bit of extra carrying capacity always a must down from here regeneration slowly regenerate your health during combat just down again allows you to reload weapons while sprinting sliding and vaulting over on the left tenacious v getting hit does not interrupt health regeneration increase your max health by 15 percent with invincible enemies cannot knock you down that one's actually a lot better than it sounds increase your armor by 10 percent allowing for a little bit of mitigation again and reduce all incoming damage by 10 percent with indestructible jumping over from here and we've got wolverine health regen activates 60 percent faster during combat up here we've got epimophorsis and that's increased health regen threshold from 70 to 75 percent in combat and to 100 percent out of combat over here we've got like a butterfly this is going to be a passive dodging does not drain any stamina multitasker allows you to shoot while sprinting sliding and vaulting this one i can't remember if we actually need it now you may well be able to take it off if Karenzikov allows for this already i can't remember off the top of my head just over here dog of war increase your health regen by 60 percent in combat marathon art sprinting does not drain stamina and just down from here last but not least cardio cure health regenerates 25 percent faster as you move this is going to make you very tanky very survivable and it's going to be a lot of fun to play jumping over to your reflexes and we're going gun gun guns but also some blades because we want to be very close with them like I said before, any of these, if you want to just look them over and just add them where I have, that will work perfect. Just remember, most times you're going to put one in the bottom one, and you can put even more in that if you want some extra damage, especially with this one. So we've got High Noon, increased crit chance with pistols by 6%. OK Corral, deal 50% more damage with pistols and revolvers to enemies whose health is below 25%. 
Then we're going down here to Gunslinger, reduce reload time for pistols and revolvers by 25%. You definitely want that. We reload very slow. Having this on is essential, otherwise you're gonna feel it a lot. Steady hand, reduce pistol and revolver recoil by 20%. You can now perform dodges whilst aiming a pistol or revolver with Acrobat. Brain power, after a successful headshot with a pistol or revolver, crit chance increases by 7% for five seconds. Then from here, we've got Wild West, removes the damage penalty from pistols and revolvers when shooting from a distance. Vanishing Point is going to increase mitigation chance by 20% for 5 seconds after performing a dodge with a pistol or revolver equipped, which we're doing pretty much constantly. By default, mitigation grants a chance to reduce any damage by 50%. Just over from here, Rio Bravo increase headshot damage multiplier with pistols and revolvers by 15%. Jumping over, we've got Desperado increase damage with pistols and revolvers by 10% because we've got all three in there. Long shot. Drop pop, increase damage with pistols and revolvers to enemies 5 plus meters away by 25%. This for any of those long range shots we might take out. Over from here and we've got Grand Finale, the last round in the pistol or revolver clip deals double damage. This is 100% the must have one as it's going to give us double damage with every single shot because our main weapon the Comrade's Hammer only has one single shot in it before you've got reload. Just over here, a fistful of dollars, increase your crit damage with pistols and revolvers by 30% and sent you again. And Westworld, increase crit chance for pistols and revolvers by 5% if fully modded. You're going to be creating a lot of weapons, you might, making sure you have this is pretty much a must. Last but not least, whatever you can chuck in this is going to up your damage and give you some nice big numbers on those headshots. The good, the bad and the ugly. After a successful crit hit with a pistol or revolver, damage and armor increases by 30% for 5 seconds, plus 1% per perk level. Next up we've got onto the blades and again as you can see we've got a lot going on, you can become even more powerful than myself, I've only just started doing this close range build so I haven't even unlocked this one which is going to make him an absolute monster. So Flight of the Sparrow, we're going to reduce the stamina cost of all attacks with blades by 50%. Our blade already has a reduction on it, now nah, we can pretty much swing away without even worrying. Just under, move while wielding a blade increases armor by 30%, keeping you alive. Increase attack speed with blades by 30% with sting like a bee. Combos with blades have a 30% chance to apply bleeding, we want that bleeding going off, this is going to help us, it's going to help them fall over, and it's going to mean we get some nice regen with some of the other stuff going on in this build. Over from here, increase bleeding duration by 10 seconds, so even when you don't take something out, when you run off, most of the time they're going to fall over from the bleed effect. Increase crit chance with blades by 10% with your, ble with your blessed blade. Crimson Tide, bleeding applied with blades can stack 3 times. Increase damage with blades by 3% for every 1% of health the enemy is missing. This is great if you go all in and just absolutely smash someone to pieces with your katana. And just up from here, Judge during Executioner, increase damage with blades by 100% against enemies with max health. So that initial big old hit. Jumping all the way over and we've got Bloodlust. Whilst wielding a blade, recover 4% health when hitting an enemy affected by bleeding. This is how we're going to get all of our health back whenever we need to. Bop into your slow mode, go in with your katana and absolutely chop them to pieces whilst regaining all of your health. Then from here, float like a butterfly, dodging increases damage with blades by 50% for 5 seconds. That's massive, very very fun in this build. And just to the right, Death Bolt, while wielding a blade, defeating an enemy restores 20% health and increases movement speed by 30% for 5 seconds. That, along with the one that's going to regen you just up here with Bloodlust, is going to keep you topped up whenever you're in trouble. And like I said, as soon as you can, make sure you get some Dragon Strike about yourself, top this up as much as you want, but have at least one in it, as it's really going to help you to take out those baddies close range with your Katana. So for your technical abilities, you're going to want crafting. We've put a few in here because obviously I'm at endgame so I've switched it around a little bit. Just over here, crafted clothes gain 10% more armor. Then you're going to want crafted weapons deal 10% more damage. Jumping over, Grease Monkey allows you to craft epic items. Cutting Edge improves damage to all damage related stats of crafted weapons by 5%. And Edge Runner Artisan allows you to craft legendary items. Definitely a must. For your engineering, 
you're going to want this one far left, Tech Weapons Ignore Armor, and this one just over here, Blade Runner, increases damage to drones, mechs, and robots by 40%. This is going to mean you can take out any baddies that are those big mech versions, nice and easy because you've got a lot going on in your build that actually hits them quite hard. Lastly, we've got revamp, increased damage from tech weapons by 25% and increases a charge damage from tech weapons by 10%. Unfortunately, we can't take advantage of the charge damage, but we do get 25%, so just put one in this if it was me. Now last but definitely not least, like I said, cool, 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 you're going to want to go over to Cold Blood, you will be able to get 11 in here rather than the 7 where I've botched up completely. Free straight in cold blood, this is going to mean that you've got a nice bit of cold blood going on. It's going to increase your movement speed and it's going to mean you've got a lot more going on because you get this cold blood effect. Just and blood brawl, while cold blood is active, increase damage with melee weapons by 10%. Over to your right, easy out, whilst cold blood is active, increase rage, increase ranged weapon damage by 20% to enemies within an area of 5 meters. Under here, one I wasn't able to pick up, Defensive Clotting increases your armor by 4% per stack of cold blood. This is going to give you a lot of extra survivability, even more than I've got in my build. If you want to chuck some in this, this is also helpful, but not essential, and that's Will to Survive. It's going to give you some nice resistances. But the two main ones you'll want that I wasn't able to put on will be Rapid Blood Flow, increase, increase health regen inside and outside of combat by 5% per stack of cold blood, and just underneath a nice bit of extra damage, Frozen Precision increases headshot damage by 5% per stack of cold blood. This is going to really, really top off your build and just make you have a lot of fun while surviving pretty much any encounter. Right, I'm sure that last bit took way, way too long, so hopefully you just looked at the screen and just popped them on your build. But if you wanted to know exactly why you're using them, then you may have stuck around for it. As always, Full Things Gaming, Full Things Xbox. Take care. I'll see you on the next day.